This video is going to be a step-by-step -step guide on how you can fine-tune your own ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo model. We are going to go over how to prepare your data sets, how to create the fine-tuning model, how to use the fine-tuning model, and some stuff around pricing, pros and cons on fine-tuning. So, let's just get going. Let's just start by looking at why you even would consider fine-tuning a model. So, we're just going to go to the OpenAI website here and look at some fine-tuning use cases, right? So, you can see what they have listed here is improved steerability. Re reliable output formatting as you will see in my example this is kind of uh, my bread and butter here and we can set a custom tone that is very easy to do too so this is like a system prompt baked into your model already uh, another great benefit is you can shorten your prompts so let's say you have a very long prompt you always used to run like in your application or something it can be something else too if you fine tune on that prompt, you can basically remove that and get more tokens. So you can see early testers have reduced prompt size up to 90% by fine tuning instructions into the model itself, speeding up the API call and cutting costs. So this means like if you have a very big input prompt, this will save you money as well as time right on inference. So there are some good use cases for fine tuning, but it's not for everyone. And hopefully this guide will kind of give you an idea what fine tuning can be good for. The first step of fine tuning our model is going to be to prepare our data sets. So here we have the fine tuning steps. Step one, prepare your data. This is the format we want every example we are going to send in to fine tune our model to be in. Uh, it's a JSON setup here uh, with three different inputs. We have the system prompt or role so yeah you can see this is like our system prompt this is the user or this is our prompt right and we have the response from the model uh, we're gonna go through this in a bit more detail but i just want to show you this and this is the data set i trained my model on so this fine-tuned model is gonna be basically a ai story instagram fine-tuned model so how i did this i kind of created the first one here over on gpt4 I thought it was a very simple way to create this. So you can see here is my fine tuning example. So we have a system role prompt. So here I just filled in like my system uh, prompt. If we go to the playground here, you can see we have this system here. And you can see this is basically what we are filling in uh, in this spot over here, right? So this is our system role. Uh, the prompt is gonna be, so you can see user prompt, right? Very intriguing short conspiracy mystery stories, 60 to 90 seconds about a given topic for short form videos. And then I assign a topic here, right? Mystery numerology and a sudden change in personality. And of course, when I assign this, I also need to put in what kind of response I want back from this. And this is where I go to my data set. I find the title here. For this kind of story right so i think it was uh yeah i think it was this one right and so what we do then we just copy uh the title we go back here and we want the response to be in this format so we want the title we want the title we want for this story and then we're gonna paste in um, our story too right so the mysterious case of hannah collins and we're gonna copy the story here right and we paste that in down here okay so what we have then is kind of, we have a system prompt, we have the user prompt, this is our input, and we have the response we want. Uh, and then I go ahead and this is the example format I want this in. So this is basically gonna be this one, right? And I just used GPT-4 to create this for me. And then we can see we have a JSON object here, and this is the format. So you can see the system role is... You are a creative, exceptional writer. You write short, yeah. So basically the same as we have over here. And we have our input prompt. So that is the user. Write a very intriguing short conspiracy mystery stories. So this is the user input, right? And we have the response. So we have the title and we have the, the story. So title and story, right? And there is our first example. So what I do then is I just copy this JSON here. I just go to an empty text file and I just paste it in here. So this is our first example, right? So example one. So you can see we have the system role and we have the input. We have the user input. So this is our prompt and we have the response, right? 
So there we have one of the examples we need to fine tune this model. So how many examples uh, do you actually need to fine tune your model? If we look at the OpenAI documentation here, so you can see to fine tune a model, you will re you are required to provide at least 10 examples. But we typically see clear improvements from fine tuning to on 50 to 100 training examples with GPT 3.5 Turbo. But the right number varies on greatly based on the exact use case. So in our case, uh, it's just gonna be, I think it's 18 or 19 examples. That's very low. Uh, but as you will see, uh, for me, that worked quite well. Actually, I was quite surprised by that. But in some cases, you might need like 1000 examples or maybe like 500. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, but this is gonna be a very simple test. So how you scale this is kind of up to you. The next step then is going to be to collect every single example I need from my data set. So what I went ahead and did, uh, I just kind of run this a few times. This was a very small data set, so I just did it kind of manually. Uh, you can do this with a Python script if you kind of want a bigger data set, then it's not so good to do that manually. But basically, like I showed you, we collected all of these examples in this uh, just this text file here and I went to notepad here and just pasted that into this notepad here I went ahead and saved this as a JSON object right and then we get this kind of structure here so here is basically all our 16 or 17 examples uh, but we want this in a kind of a different format uh, for the fine-tuning job so if we go back here to GPT-4, I'm going to show you a prompt I used for this. You can see here, uh, I have uploaded the JSON file with examples. So here is basically I've uploaded uh, the JSON file we have here. And I went, uh, can you turn that into a separated JSON L formatted conversation using these three steps? Split the content based on the pattern seen in the start conversation. Parse each split selection. And if successful, add it to a list of conversations. And I just press submit on that and it kind of went through this uh, workload here and I saved the conversation in a JSON L format you can download it from here perfect so I went ahead downloaded that and here is kind of the final form we want our um, uh, data set to be in so you can see we have a numbered here and this is the first example right so you can see I have a total of 16 examples here. So remember, we need a minimum 10 examples to do a fine tuning job. I have 16 now. Uh, you can have as many as you want, of course, but the price is going to go up the more examples you have. Uh, but this means now that we are ready to create a fine tuning job. And that brings us to step number two, and that is going to be uploading our examples to OpenAI. So you can see in our fine tuning steps here, step two, upload files. For this, uh, the best thing is to use a small Python script that I have created here. If you are interested in this Python script, if you just want to copy it from my GitHub, uh, you can find a link to my membership down below where I'm gonna do a. Uh, I'm gonna do more tutorials on fine tuning and stuff, and I'm gonna be uploading all of these scripts to the community GitHub over there. You can just download them and use this, or you can just copy it from this video. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty simple setup. Uh, we need to feed in our OpenAI key. We need to put in our path here to our JSON L object or file, right? And that is basically it. The purpose is going to be fine tuned. And we have a simply, yeah, we need our file ID here. So it's very important to print that because we need that in the next step when we actually are going to create the model. Remember, this is the step to upload it. So I'm just going to show you on screen now how I did this yesterday because I had to do this in advanced. And here you can see what I do here. I just go into this Python script. I run the script here. And just like that, we have our files uploaded. So it's very important now that you copy the file ID and save that because, like I said, we need that in the next step. And that brings us over to step number three. That is going to be create a fine tuning job. And again, for this, we need the, um, a small Python script to run this. You can find this over on OpenAI documentation for fine tuning. And I have created the script here. So you can see this is where we are going to put in our file ID. So this is quite important. And here is where you select your model you want to fine tune. Uh, I want to use the GPT 3.5 Turbo, right? So this is going to be fine-tuning job.create from OpenAI. We have the file ID, we have the model name, 
and we wanna print this with a job ID. This job ID we need if we are gonna monitor our progress, so we also want to save that. And yeah, that's basically all we have to do. So, uh, as you're gonna see on the screen here now, this is from yesterday, so I'm just gonna run the script again. And just like that, the fine tuning job is created. So, I go ahead, I copy the job ID, I'm gonna save that if like I wanna monitor. This is a very small job, so I don't think we even have to monitor this step. Uh, but if you have a big job, this could take some time. Then you just want to go in and see if everything has started and stuff. So keep the file ID and the job ID uh, saved somewhere. So you can look it up if something goes wrong, right? Okay, so step number four is actually using your fine-tune model. So how I like to check if like the model has completed is just to go to my playground here, right? Uh, I just go to playground, I go to chat, I go to model. And here you can see fine tunes so this is the model we just trained right and now we are actually ready to use this uh, there are kind of two ways you can use this now we can either just use it here in the playground right that's very simple we just select the model here and it's ready to go remember uh, here now the only thing we have to put in is kind of just this simple prompt here uh, we can even shorten this if we kind of wanted to, but uh, it's very short. We don't, don't have to put in any system prompts. Only thing we have to do is just change up kind of the topic here. Uh, so if we want a different story, we can just change the topic now. So if we run this now, hopefully we will get a title and a story that kind of fits our data sets we train this model on, right? So let's try that. And yeah, perfect. You can see, we got a title, we got a story. And this is the format we were looking for. Uh, and kind of the same story type, the story length. And if we just remove this, run it again, we get a different story. This saves me a lot of time, like if I just use, let's say, ChatGPT to create the stories. I have to create the story, I have to look for a title. And of course, if we filled in a lot of more examples of this as I might do some other time or when GPT-4 gets available we will get better results but for now this is very cheap it's very fast and yeah it works well but this is only one of the ways we can use this if we go over to our python script here I just have a simple python script here so you can see here we can put in our model name right inside here if we wanted to try this, there's no point for you for trying this model, it's not gonna work. Uh, we can't share this, so uh, there's no point trying to copy this. Then we can run it as an API call here. If I just run this now here, and let's say we grab the same prompt as we used here. Let me just do this. So let's copy that, and we get back to the terminal here. I paste in this. And then we can get this as an API call, so we can actually use this prompt both in our playground and in our API calls. So here you can see the case of the haunting number, and we get a story. So you can see this works on both of these instances. And that is basically it. Now our model is ready to use. Uh, I just wanted to take a quick look at the pricing. So basically, this model cost me 25 cents. So I was quite surprised by that. My previous has been, the fine tuning is quite expensive. But uh, in this case, it seems very fair. Of course, now I only did a few examples. Uh, but we can look uh, at the pricing here. If we go to fine tuning models, GPT 3.5 turbo here. Outputs is gonna cost you 0016 dollars per thousand tokens. Here it's gonna be like, yeah, it's a bit steeper. It's about, I would say eight times more expensive, but it's still quite low. This is a use case you really need. Uh, yeah, I would probably go for it. At least I'm gonna try to, but I'm waiting for GPT-4. I think that's gonna be much more interesting, but at least it's working well. And I'm quite happy actually how the results turn out and it's very cheap to run. Just some final words on the GPT 3.5 turbo fine tuning. Um, yeah, I think it's quite interesting actually. I think it's a nice, way to get familiar with how you can actually use this in your uh, use cases because we see here now with fine-tuning for GPT-4 coming this fall 
you can already start getting familiar with this if you have like a, a big plan to use a fine tool GPT-4 model. Um, but uh, like you said, early tests have shown that fine tune versions of 3.5 Turbo can match or even outperform base GPT-4 level capabilities of narrow task. And that is the great thing about a fine tune model. So like I showed you over here, this is a very narrow task we use this for, right? Just creating Instagram stories with our fine tune model. That is a very narrow task. Uh, I hope this guide gave you some uh, instructions that you actually can use. And maybe you want to try this out. Like I said, all of these uh, Python scripts here is going to be uploaded to uh, my members GitHub. So if you want to try that, go in the description below and you can find a link to my membership and sign up and get access to this and a lot of other videos and a more in-depth step-by-step guide on how you can do this. So yeah, I think that was it. Hopefully it was helpful. Give this video a like if it was. Maybe subscribe if you want more of this. Have a great day and I hopefully I'll see you in the next one.